Bitcoin is dumping, Ethereum is broken, yet I still have a smile on my face, even though it is a very blue Monday indeed. Hey guys, my name is Sheldon Evans, welcome back. Or if you're new here, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and turn on all of those bell notifications. As you know, YouTube does gatekeep some of this cryptocurrency content here on YouTube. So unless you let them know that you want to see this time sensitive and important information, you're going to miss out. Right, so just as I said, we have seen a lot of red across the charts today. There have been quite a few corrections. The market has been dumping Bitcoin all the way back down to around the $56,000 level. And I say all the way back down with a bit of sarcasm because we are still in a very bullish trend. The market is still going upwards. There is nothing to worry about. You guys know if you are part of the Patreon that I have spoken about exactly why this is happening and why the market is looking red throughout March. March is typically a bearish month for Bitcoin and for crypto in general. So even though we know that we're in a bull market right now, there are these mild corrections that happen from time to time to give the market some time to breathe. So on my display right now, I have the Bitcoin Tether chart open and I have two indicators on or turned on in particular, and that is the 50 and the 200 period moving averages. I've spoken about these in the past as to why they're important, but I'll just give you a quick breakdown. Essentially, in the short term, we use the 50 period moving average as a short term support that we bounce off of. So you can see that we bounce off of it and it signals a further move upward. But if we do break this 50 period moving average, we break back down and then we test the 200 period period moving average. And we do this many, many times. So we'll bounce off of it here. You can see that it shoots us back up. But when we do break through it, it goes back down to test the 200 period, period moving average where we will bounce and then we come back down. If we do end up breaking through that, we do see a short term bearish trend over here. But if we break above it again, that signals a bullish trend. So in the short term right now, we are going to be testing this 200 period moving average. And if we break below it, we could see a short term bearish trend back down to the $50,000 level. And perhaps if we break that back down all the way to the $42,000, $43,000 level. But I'm not worried about this at all. And I explain exactly why in this video. And we'll cover some news as well as some FUD so we can see both sides of the coin as to what is happening in the market. So if we, even if we go over to the daily chart, you'll see Bitcoin is still looking incredibly bullish. We're in this parabola. We're going back up. We're, we're making new highs, higher lows. So there's nothing to worry about. Bitcoin is doing a short term mild correction. We're entering a new leg. This is what the market does. It has these mild corrections. And we can see this if we go over to the Bitcoin charts from past, right? So we can see Bitcoin is looking very bullish right here. Yet this chart that we're looking at is from 2017. This chart is in the parabola, very similar to what we're looking at right now. We're going straight up. Yet this is only the beginning, right? If we extend this slightly and we go over to further in the year, that is where we were. We were like back here. This little bump that we see right here that is currently parabolic on this chart is but a small little bump in the grand scheme of things, which is this right now, right here. Whereas if we extend the chart to present day, this huge bump right here is then dwarfed by the current present day moment that we're in right now. So it's all about perspective. It's all looking at the charts in hindsight and seeing what has happened in the past and how far we are along this bull market. We're still very early into the year. We're still very early into the bull market. And there's a few things that might either extend or shorten this market, which we'll talk about as to the predictions as to when the market is going to top out and when we should look at scaling out of our positions. So let's take a look at Ethereum again. We can see that Ethereum is bouncing between that $1,600 and $1,800 level. Again, we've got a solid basically consolidation period. Ethereum is not doing anything right now because it is broken, right? We know that Ethereum is struggling. It is a congested network. Gas fees are extremely high. So it's giving opportunity for blockchains like Cosmos and Polkadot and Cardano to come in and take some of that market share away from Ethereum, at least in the short term. In the short term, we have layer two protocols and layer two solutions that are coming in to solve some of these issues with Ethereum in the short term. But once that is solved, it'll give Ethereum another chance to run. Which brings me on to an idea that perhaps this bull market is going to be incredibly different to what we've seen in the past, right? Many people are saying that this market is going to top out in September. They're giving exact dates, which in my mind is absolutely insane. It's BS. It's, it can't work. You can't predict the market to an exact date. Often you'll see these predictions say it'll be this exact date, give, a, give or take a week or two after or before. That's an entire month that you're giving as a an, an exact estimated date, which doesn't make any sense. It's 
it's illogical. It, it doesn't work. So the thing that happens with these predictions is they become self-fulfilling prophecies. So if someone predicts that this Bitcoin or this cycle is going to top out at a certain date, the market believes that psychology and starts working towards making that the truth. So leading up to that date, people start entering the market and it starts entering this parabola because people believe that the market is going to end and they start scaling out of their positions or exiting right before that, causing a market crash because this is what has been drilled in, into their heads and that's what they believe, therefore fulfilling the prophecy or fulfilling the idea that this is when the market should end. The same thing goes with predictions of prices of coins. When people say a certain coin will hit a certain price, this prediction is completely based on speculation. There's nothing in the world that says that a certain coin should hit a certain price. We don't know how much money is out there. We don't know how much money is going to be pumped into the market. Yet it's the psychological levels that are important. If something has been trading at 10 cents, 20 cents, 30 cents, a dollar is a, psycho a psychological level that people are expecting to hit and then start taking profits at because, wow, we've hit one dollar on X coin or Y coin. But then once that psychology or that marker passes and we start entering a new leg up, maybe the next psychological level is $5 because people are saying, yes, if this coin can hit $5, it's going to be fantastic. It's going to be the top of the bull market. So what people end up doing is they start buying up until that point and then sell when we hit $5, therefore fulfilling that idea. So it's all about psychology. There's nothing but speculation in this market right now because we are in the speculative bubble. Whether you like it or not, we are in a bubble that is guaranteed this is how the market works this is how the market follows cycles we follow these speculative bubbles and they burst they do burst but it comes down to trying to figure out when trying to time the market the best that we can but not everyone can time the market correctly because if that was the case no one would win and no one would lose and that's not how the markets work somebody has to win somebody has to lose and that money has to transfer somewhere so what i'm saying is that exact predictions and these exact ideas are absolute BS and they don't work. So don't believe them. Don't try and follow them. Just do your own analysis and understand the market in the best way that you can in both from a fundamental side of view, psychological side of view, as well as a technical side of view. That is why we cover both of these on this channel. So that we have a better idea of how the market will react, not based just purely on a speculative idea, but also what the technicals are saying. So with that being said, I do think we're still in a very bullish trend and I'll explain why. So we do have the US stimulus check coming out very soon, which again, contributes to the psychological side of things, right? A $1.9 trillion stimulus bill is going to cause a huge ripple in the market. That money is going to be pumped into the market, not directly into crypto, not directly into the stocks, but the idea that many people are going to be using their stimulus on the stock market in crypto then enforces other people to put more money into crypto into the stock market fulfilling that idea again so people anticipate this rise in the price therefore the price rises and it's just based on what people expect the market to do and what value the people give the market you are the people you are an investor so if you're trying to outperform somebody else and let's say 20,000, 30,000, 100,000 people see this video or any other video for that matter with a prediction in it, those prophecies become self-fulfilling. So all in all, what I'm saying is that you can't predict the market. You can't time it perfectly. You will not. Um, some of you will, and so that will invalidate the statement that I've just said, but many of you won't. And therefore, it just comes down to trying to do our best, trying to make as much profit as you can and trying to not be too greedy which as, as well, if we look at the fear and greed index, I'll see if I can open that here. We're still currently still at extreme greed, right? So we've got around the 76 level all the way back from 92 last month, which was incredibly greedy. Um, and you guys know the idea, right? When others are greedy, you should be fearful. And when others are fearful, you should be greedy. So currently everyone's greedy. Maybe it's time to take some profits, which is what if people are doing. And that's why we're seeing a bit of a correction right now. It's just a short term move. I do believe once this starts clearing up and we start getting less greedy and more fearful, we're going to start buying again and it will give us an opportunity for that next leg or next run up. We also have some FUD, which is all negative news, which is the whale pressure that is hitting the exchanges. So there have been some whale movements, meaning people with a lot of Bitcoin transferring it into exchanges. Now, it doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to sell, but again, the psychology behind this. People are seeing these whale movements into exchanges and selling or front running them and selling before these whales sell, right? They're selling in anticipation of the whales selling. So it, it comes down to people trying to outperform or front run other people 
and we see these markets in the movement in the uh, movements in the market happen before they should happen. So we see these movements coming to the market or into exchanges, these well movements coming into exchanges, so people anticipate that and they start selling off. But this is still a good thing for now because we do know that exchange reserves of Bitcoin have been drying up. As you guys know, uh, Coinbase struggled. Coinbase reserves, for example, are down by almost 20% since December alone. This is a good thing, meaning that people are withdrawing their Bitcoin from exchanges for long-term holding. They aren't pumping it directly into the market or into the exchanges or holding it on exchanges waiting to sell at any moment. They're storing it in cold storage for a long-term storage. And a lot of this is due to the institutional investment because these institutions aren't buying at $40,000, $50,000 just to sell at $55,000 or $60,000. They're buying Bitcoin to hold for 5, 10, 20, 30 years. That is what is happening. So that's why we are seeing these uh, reserves on exchanges being depleted because people are or institutions are withdrawing their Bitcoin for long term storage. So that's why I also believe that this market is going to be very different or the cycle is going to be very different to what we've seen in the past because we haven't seen this level of institutional investment at all. Now, this could perhaps lengthen the cycle, uh, even though we're expecting it to be shorter because there's it's going to be perhaps a super cycle that tops out and just explodes and comes crashing back down to levels that we uh, don't expect or that we've never seen before. But there are a variety of different factors and variables that are coming into play like the institutional investment, like the basically the long-term holding of Bitcoin. We're seeing Ethereum that is struggling, struggling right now with perhaps lengthening the cycle based on that. Maybe once Ethereum fixes the issues that it has, it'll give DeFi and it'll give crypto perhaps a new run that is longer, that extends past the point of when uh, Ethereum solves the, the gas fees issues, right? Or perhaps in, on the other side of things, when those gas fee issues are solved, maybe Ethereum tops out very, very quickly because people start using it immediately, DeFi explodes again, and we see this huge blow off top and we come crashing back down. So the only thing we can do is we cannot predict the market. We can only react. So all we can do is look at it regularly and try and figure out what is happening in the market and then react to it. But like I said, right now we're still early. It's March, take, some, take your eyes off of the charts, look away, go for a walk relax a little bit it's better for your mental health to, to do that but in the in the long term we're still in a bull run don't stress about that i think that we've still got a lot of room to go here and perhaps even longer than previous cycles so just as i said given the macro context it's so bullish for bitcoin right now it pays to be patient and not get liquidated on low time frames when larger moves are likely just around the corner so uh, due to this this huge move lately or today, we've seen around $1.8 billion in liquidations. Uh, I'm not sure if we can see that here somewhere, but we had about $1.8 billion of liquidations across exchanges. Now, this is be because people are over leveraged. And this, again, is what causes this cascading effect downwards for Bitcoin. So when people start getting liquidated, their trades start uh, get ended, right? Or they uh, end their trades before they get liquidated therefore creating this cascading effect of Bitcoin crashing back down. So let's say somebody exits right at the top here because they start getting liquidated. That causes a surge of more liquidations and more liquidations. And we keep seeing this cascading effect. That's why we get multiple candles in the red. Whereas if one person just gets liquidated and more people buy, we won't see these cascading moves downwards. So in, in actual fact, what's happening is it's due to many people getting liquidated, many people exiting their trades, and then this snowball effect happening of people exiting their trades, selling off their Bitcoin, selling off their crypto, and we're seeing hours, days, weeks of red moves, which is great. This is great news. It gives us more buying opportunities, time to load up our bags, because we know that we're in the midst of a bull market, and we're going to multiply those gains in the coming months. Then we have the India FUD, which is very interesting. So India is to have a window for Bitcoin, says the minister, amid the crypto ban FUD. So as you guys know, India is looking at banning a cryptocurrency. So after India's Supreme Court lifted a crypto banking ban one year ago, reports of a new ban circulating in early 2021. In February, another anonymous Indian official claimed that the government was about to introduce a complete ban on crypto, giving investors up to six months to liquidate their holdings. So again, this is just complete FUD, and this is exactly why I'll explain. So India's central bank announced a ban on the sale or purchase of cryptocurrency. But if we look closely, this is from the 6th of April, 2018. So 
Crypto has been being banned for many, many years. It never happens. It can't happen. If you try and ban crypto, you don't ban cryptocurrency. You ban yourself from cryptocurrency. So if India does end up banning cryptocurrency or initiating some sort of ban, all they're doing is isolating themselves. They're cutting themselves off to the rest of the world, to the future of finance. They're not banning it from anyone. So Bitcoin will not be shut off. CBDC does not mean shutting off other crypto assets and utilities. India, your time is here. Time to whittle and win and win so like i said india is not banning crypto they are giving some sort of a, a short-term period for people to experiment with cryptocurrencies and use them all in all it's just people that are, are afraid right they're afraid of this new era of uh, finance this new era of investment they don't understand it and they want to front run it so by slowing, trying to slow it down, they give themselves time to build their own CBDC, central bank digital currencies, and try and get ahead of the herd and ahead of the pack. But they can't. They're slow. Governments are slow. They're behind the markets, right? So them trying to initiate this FUD or trying to slow, slow down the market is not going to work. Uh, and overall, I'm not worried about this at all. This is just FUD. That's all it is. There's nothing to worry about. Crypto is not going to be banned. We're still in the bull market. And Bitcoin's going to be around for, for many, many years, even after the bull market, right? And maybe in the next run, because we are now seeing this institutional investment, that is when the CBDCs will really start being developed quite quickly. And they'll be around for the next bull market in four or five years. So Bitcoin is the best performing asset of the past decade by 900%. So this is a very interesting stat to me and something that I, I always sort of chuckle at because over the past 10 years, Bitcoin has beaten out all over asset classes by at least a factor of 10. So responding to the findings, Missouri researcher Roberto Talamas highlighted that Bitcoin has produced an annual, annualized return of 230% on average, more than 10, 10 times higher than the second ranked asset class. So the data shows that gold made a paltry annualized return of 1.5% in 2011, with five out of the past 11 years producing a loss for the asset. According to the gold, the pre precious metal has fallen by 8.5% since the beginning of 2021. So overall, whether you buy Bitcoin now, whether you buy it at $40,000, at $100,000, at $20,000, at $10,000, which I don't believe we will ever reach those levels again, but wherever you buy it within the next year, within the next five years, you will be in profit. You will make a huge return if you look on the long run or in the long scale, long time frame, right? In five, 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, Bitcoin is going to be your hedge against inflation. It's going to be the world's reserve currency. It's going to be the world's store of value. And overall, there's nothing to worry about. You might see some short-term losses. People are going to get burnt in this bull market. That is without a doubt going to happen exactly as it happened in the previous bull market. But if you're looking for a long-term store value, a long-term investment, investment, Bitcoin is not a bad idea at all. Um, we also have macro guru Raul Paul saying that Bitcoin could hit $1 million this cycle. Now, this is, again is one of those predictions that is just based on uh, past experiences and past uh, ideas as to and models as to where Bitcoin could go, where the cycle could go. And this depends on this becoming a super cycle right so the next big thing after that i think 100,000 is going to be an issue because a lot of people got in at around 10,000 a lot of people have made 10 times their money and $100,000 is a round number and people think let me take half my chips off the table so i think we might see a longer correction at the $100,000 level that's what Raul Powell says we also have then people looking at the stock to flow model so i've peaked at a million but not for this cycle but it's possible that we overshoot so what he's saying is that just as we've seen in previous cycles where we have these parabolic moves upwards, we might not hit a million dollars here, which could be what we believe at the top of the cycle. But if we keep moving upwards, perhaps we hit a million dollars in that last leg of the parabola. As you guys know, parabolas are exponential. So the last moves of the par parabola are huge. So we could go from 50 to 100, from 100 to 500, from 500 to a million in a matter of weeks. Uh, possibly even days if the market does really go crazy because the parabola moves so much faster towards the end. So we could see this huge blow off top if we do start moving towards that parabolic move. And then at the end, we just see that huge run up to a million dollars or close to that at least. I personally don't believe that we will see that this, this cycle, but I am being a little bit more conservative. 
I think around the $250,000, $300,000 level is somewhat of a, a safe bet. And at that point, I'll be scaling out of most of my positions and sitting on the sidelines. I'm not afraid or I don't regret any of my decisions when I do these moves. You will rather exit too early than too late, right? If you exit too late, there's a large amount of regret. But if you exit too early, at least you've taken your profits. If you're entering right now, you'll still be in some quite a, a good amount of profit. And at that point, you can sit safely on the sideline with your profits and watch the rest of the market move just and uh, as a spectator sport, right? So you sit on the sidelines and just watch what the rest of the market does. Then again, we have roll-ups, which could make Ethereum cheaper to use. Now I spoke about this as to how this could be a short-term scalability solution to Ethereum and why Ethereum could move uh, slightly better than it is currently in ranging around the $1,600 to $1,800 level. Once these rollups start being uh, implemented on more and more layer two solutions, right? So we could have faster transactions on Ethereum. We have the rollup solution, which essentially all a rollup is, is it processes more of the transactions on a side chain or a layer two. So the transactions aren't processed directly on the Ethereum blockchain. They're processed sort of off chain or on, on a parachain or a side chain and uh, then is basically transplanted back into the, the main Ethereum chain and then processed as a sort of bulk transaction uh, processing. But the problem with this is that these transactions on the side chain essentially re uh, change the decentralization of Ethereum, right? They're, they're not fully decentralized because we're relying on now a third party to manage those transactions and ensure that those transactions aren't getting meddled with, they aren't getting changed, nothing's being uh, lost. Their security is based on that that side chain, not on Ethereum's uh, security of the network. So the problem that ends up happening is that there, there's a lot of room for exploits, a lot of room for changes to, meet, to be made for those transactions, and the security is slightly compromised. So that's why these layer two solutions are temporary, at least until Ethereum starts implementing EIP-1559 and a variety of other things to speed up the transactions on the base layer protocol. So on the base layer of Ethereum. And once we do that, I believe Ethereum will then really start moving like crazy because we don't want to be compromising on security just for faster transactions. If Ethereum is going to be the leader in DeFi or maybe Cardano comes in, maybe Polkadot comes in, no one knows exactly what is going to be the leader, but whatever one it is or whichever chain it is, we don't want to be compromising on security for speed. If we want institutional investment, if we want banks and businesses and institutions to use Ethereum, to use Cardano, to use Polkadot, they, they don't want to do anything that will compromise on security. We've been using the slow archaic banking system for many, many years because it is somewhat safe, at least in the banking style or the banking system, it's somewhat safe but very, very slow. So they're not going to move to something that's faster if it's going to be less secure. So there is a short-term solution for, for Ethereum, but I don't believe that until we solve this entirely that Ethereum is going to really have the run that it deserves, which could be later on this year. As you guys know, it's scheduled, at least the hard fork is scheduled for July. Then I just want to take a look at some altcoins and how patience is important. So you guys know you're probably sick of it if you're in the Patreon, but I speak about patience over and over and over again as to why it's so important. So some of the calls on this channel have taken some time to make some money, right? You you have to wait. Many people are expecting these huge pump and dumps. They're waiting for a pump, pump or one other coin is pumping before theirs. Wait your turn. It will come. So if we look at Travala, when we called it, it was a dollar, just over a dollar thirty, right? So on the 15th of January, 16th of January, it was $1.30. And since then, we've had the steady move ride, uh, ride up all the way to almost $4. Well, $4 at the peak and now $3.70. So it takes some time for these moves to go up. The same with bird money. It took some time since we initially called it at around $30. Moved up, moved up, and now we're at $225, right? A pump out of nowhere today all the way pushing us to around $250 almost. But it took some time. You just have to wait your turn for that pump to come. The same with shopping.io. We had this initial pump, dump, some consolidation, and we've been moving steadily towards the upside. Why? Because the fundamentals don't change. Unless the fundamentals of your project have changed, there's no reason that you should exit your positions. There's no reason that you should sell. There's no reason that you should be worried. If you entered and nothing has changed, the team's still developing, they're still working on things, Stick around and wait your turn because your pump will come, your growth will come, and your bags 
will turn into profit. Or if they aren't in profit already, they'll turn into even more profit, right? So it does just take some time. We are in a bearish month. We're in a bull market. So just wait. Many people are very impatient. Things in crypto happen very quickly. For example, if we look at this from $9 to what is that, $50, $60 in a matter of days, these pumps happen all the time, but you can't predict them. So instead, we wait patiently and we wait. You wait. Many people that were waiting since here waited for this pump. Many people that have been waiting since here waited for this pump. Many people who entered here waited for this pump. So it just takes time. It takes patience. And you just have to wait your turn for your bags to pump. So I just want you guys to not be afraid, not be fearful. We're in a bull market. Your bags will pump and eventually the profit will come to you. That's all I have for you guys today. I hope you liked the video. If you did, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and smash that like button. And I shall see you in the next video. Cheers.